Hello, this is Bill Morgan, president of Parker University and Parker Seminars here in Las Vegas, Nevada, with our keynote speaker, Cal Ripken. Cal, thanks for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Like thanks the look. Oh, the hairdo? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so I'm, not, I'm not too vain. Looks like you're not, you aren't on either. <laughs> so we had a, a great keynote speech, great points coming out. And one of the things you said was the manager was would contemplate pulling you out, but you were doing so much more for the, the team than just your, your place. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, um, a lot of times you think about baseball as being just hitting and fielding, you know, but there's so much more in between there that you can provide value to. And Frank Robinson paid uh, me the biggest compliment when he was a manager of mine, and uh, you go through ups and downs and slumps, and there was a couple times when he thought he was going to end the streak. And he went into his office and thought about, well, he's not hitting, so I can replace his bat. And I can get close to replacing his glove. But then I thought about all the other things, all the other contributions that I made, and those intangibles were... Uh, um, were meaningful to Frank, and he said, um, "I didn't, I didn't want to, or I couldn't replace those." That's that was probably the, the key point to the whole the, the whole speech you gave, which is the, the value you bring to the team, and you also talked about teamwork. So be of greater value than just your position. Is what I, I hear you saying, but then also, you know, work on the team and not you know, be inclusive, not divisive. True. The uh, sometimes uh, competition can. Uh, can work against you um, if you're competing too hard against your own teammates. You, you guys have to be on the same team, um, and sometimes it can be a healthy push. You know, if you have somebody pushing you that wants to take your position, um, it makes you work a little harder and makes you protect your position a little bit more. But I, I always saw it as a, as a way to work a little harder. Awesome. We also talked a little bit about your experience with a chiropractor. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, that's uh, it's an interesting thing because people often wonder what the secret is, and and I thought. There were a couple times in the minor leagues where my back was out and it stayed out for a while and then all of a sudden your back is tightening up and your hammies are tightening up and you can't have the freedom to play. And uh, I did have a trainer in the minor leagues that was a chiropractor and he could get me back in line really quickly. He, he taught the young trainer that had me for my whole career when he came to the big leagues um, how to adjust my back and so he became very good at it. So. When I was covering second base and I got a bad throw and I was going one way, direction and turned the other one and my back would come out, he could get it back quickly in, in place so it would allow me to play the next day and allow me to play a day game um, after a night game. So I was very thankful that I had somebody on the staff that knew what to do. We were also talking in, in the green room a little bit about prep before a game and how a lot of the players would have really loud music playing, but you like to, to settle down. And that's important to us. We're, we're, we're creating a neuro center and we've learned about neural fatigue, that actually lots of loud music before a performance actually can fatigue you and drain your, your performance. But you elaborate on yeah, your that, pregame. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Uh, terminology is fun when you're teaching anything. Mm -hmm. And so being able to, uh, um, to say something in a way that somebody else gets it. So you're talking about, uh, to me, loud music and even doing too many things or being too social is stimulating. And it kind of wears you out. And then before a game, you really need your focus and you need to quiet yourself um, where you can start to focus and you can execute. Because when you go out in the environment, 50,000 people screaming, um, you're trying to do really well. You need to gain control of yourself. And I always found out I needed to find a quiet place. And like 45 minutes before the game, they uh, take the media out of the clubhouse. And I don't think they do it for that reason. But I always enjoyed that, that it gave our, uh, a ch us a chance to actually really focus on the game and get to that quiet place. That's great. And that's, science has proven that out, that you actually need to dampen that. You have, only have so many uh, um, uh, decisions you have in a day, so much you can handle it as far as stimulation, and you need to save it if you're playing for a big game. Now, one last question. It, I was, you've had a great career. You've worked with your dad, your brother. It's been amazing. If you were to go back in time to a 21-year-old Cal Ripken Jr., what would you tell him? What advice would you give him? Can you bring back, my dad used to say in the minor leagues who he was developing, we always constantly try to put 40-year-old heads on 21-year-old bodies, which really you're trying to give them the experience. Um, what would be really good advice to give? I had such a good dad that said, you have to experience things first, and then we can actually start to put the experience, or uh, the now you, now you can understand the lesson so much more fully by doing it, not just talking about it. So. I don't know what advice I'd give myself. Um, I'd say invest in Xerox. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. But uh, you often wonder, a lot of people ask me, you know, what kind of advice can you give my son? You know, what, what are the most important things? And I, and I go, um, don't play because somebody else wants you to play. Play because you want to play. Calvin, and, thank you so very much for having us. We're so blessed to have you at Parker Seminars. Thank you. My pleasure.